thank you so much and uh, thank you, Minister. And um, Minister, I have asked you here today to ask about the Coronian system, particularly as it is relates to the Justice Plan 2022, which commits to bringing forward nationwide coroner review proposals later this year to address, identify issues and drive innovative change. My biggest concern right now relates to the absence of a coroner in Carlow District. We currently have 34 coroners in a 38 coronial district. Why do we not have a coroner appointed in Carlow? There is temporary cover from Leash that is already three years in place. As you know, coroners are appointed by the local authority, except in the district of Dublin where it is appointed by your own office. Where a vacancy arises in a particular cor coronial district, and that district falls within local authority areas where there is more than one uh, coronial district, your office may follow consultation with the local authority, direct another coroner from the same local authority area to resume the coronial duties of the vacant office. These can then be amalgamated districts. However, there is no specific protocol in a case such as in Carlow where the passing of a coroner left a vacancy which has still to be filled and is currently being held by a coroner in a separate district for it to be filled from that district. There is no urgency to fill the vacant role and this concerns me. Coroner districts within counties have been amalgamated from 48 districts to 38 in 2022. Carlow remains a district, although without a coroner. The legal requirements for a person to be appointed as a coroner or a duty coroner are set out in the legislation. Are there any plans, Minister, to broaden this? As you know, no person shall be appointed to be a coroner or a deputy coroner unless he or she is a practising barrister of at least five years standing, a practising solicitor of at least five years standing, or a registered medical practitioner who has been registered other than provisionally or temporarily under the Medical Practi Practitioners Act 1927 to 1961 in the Register of Medical Practitioners for Ireland, or who has been entitled to be so registered for at least five years. Yet there is no application process, no job site to apply. So what steps are being taken to recruit a Carl O'Connor for a vacancy that is some years in existence? To date, only two such appointments have been made, one in Kildare and one in Meath. And Minister, my understanding is that there is a mechanism for coroner's service to recruit extra staff, and maybe you might come back to me on that. The Civil Law and Criminal Law Act 2020 provided for the assignment and appointment of temporary coroners as part of the national response to the COVID-19 pandemic, yet Carlo remains without one. Section 13 of the 1962 Act provides that each coroner shall appoint a deputy coroner. Again, in the case of Carlo Minister, we don't have one. We have been promised many times comprehensive reform in the system, but we can't seem to get the, the right staff in place. I have argued for a review of the system, a widening of powers, a better system that empowers families left behind after a debt, more transparency and supports for those bereaved through suicide. I support calls for better data collection so that we can learn lessons better and for recommendations made by coroners to have greater weight. In committee, I called for a full-time coroner in each district reporting to the recruitment and resource from a national coroner service with consistent standards of practice across the country and sufficient support to ensure families left behind are supported in a most difficult time in their lives. I look forward, Minister, to hearing your plans for these vital reforms. Thank you. Um, thank you, Anastasia Corley, and thank you, um, Deputy, for raising what is an important issue and maybe giving me, me an opportunity um, to provide clarity on some of the issues and to outline, I suppose, what has been done to date. Uh, and obviously, we have plans to, to do further work. As you've outlined, the coroner service is a network of coroners and districts throughout the country. They're an independent, quasi judicial official uh, whose function is to investigate sudden and unexplained deaths so that a death certificate can issue. It's obviously a very important public service, in particular to the next of kin, to, to friends and family of the deceased. They don't only provide closure, I think, for a lot of people and, and those who have been bereaved, but also provide a wider public service by identifying matters of public health and safety concerns. As you've rightly outlined, Deputy, my Justice Plan 2022 commits to bringing forward this year nationwide review proposals to deliver a service improvement plan to address identified issues, driving innovative change, enhancing customer service and improving interaction inter with pathology services. Um, uh, until I suppose I have that review, 
getting into more detail is not possible at the moment, but it is something that I'm committed to doing by the end of the year and obviously will engage with you uh, once I have that report. Many of the recommendations maybe just outline what has been done to date because there has been a lot of updates uh, of the 2000 review of the coroner service related to the strengthening of the legal provisions regarding the work of the coroner. Since then, there has been significant implementation of a number of these recommendations, firstly through the amendments to the Coroner's Act in 19, of 1962, in particular the Amendment Act of 2005, which ended the restriction on the number of medical witnesses allowed at inquests. The Civil and Miscellaneous Provisions Act of 2011 provided for the restructuring and amalgamation of the coronial districts, which you've outlined, uh, have gone from 48 uh, in 2000, reduced to 38 in 2022. Courts and Civil Law Miscellaneous Provisions Act then of 2013 provided for legal aid and legal advice by certification by the coroner to the Legal Aid Board in relation to inquests. We then had the Coroner's Amendment Act 2019, which clarified, strengthened and modernised coroner's powers when it came to reporting investigations and inquests of death. The scope of inquiries at inquest was expanded beyond being limited to establishing the medical cause of death to then actually seeking to establish, to the extent the coroner considers necessary, the circumstances in which the death occurred. The Act also broadened the coroner's powers relating to mandatory reporting and inquest of maternal deaths, deaths in custody or childcare situations and significant new powers to compel witnesses and evidence at inquest. And then more recently, we had the Civil Law and Criminal Law Miscellaneous Act of 2020, which provided, among other things, for the assignment and appointment of temporary coroners to act simultaneously with other coroners in exceptional circumstances. And this was used uh, in part response to the COVID-19 pandemic. So there's been a lot of change and a lot of amendments and a lot of acts uh, in the last decade or so. I think improving the overall structure and system, but obviously what we're doing now is reviewing it again to see what more we can do to make sure that it is a system that works uh, as effectively as it can. Uh, in relation to, to Carlo, um, Eugene O'Connor has been in situ as coroner in Leash since 96, and as deputy coroner for Carlo, he assumed the duties of coroner when we, we had the unexpected death of the Carlo coroner, Dr Brendan Doyle, back in April of 2019. Um, as you've rightly said, the appointment of coroners outside of Dublin is a function of the relevant local authorities. My own department and I'm not aware of any plans to appoint separate coroners to these counties at this time, but obviously that is a matter for the council to decide and, and not something that I would prevent or, or stop them from doing. So um, I would say that um, it is available to the coroner for Leash Carlo. So uh, at the moment, um, Eugene, who has assumed duties to request that I, as Minister for Justice, would authorise the deputy coroner, where there is a deputy coroner in Carlo at the moment, to act contemporaneously, so in, in line with or um, at the same time as the work that he is doing. So that option is there for them to, to request that I would approve that, and that's something that I, I can do, mm -hmm. uh, and perhaps something that the deputy might want to, to suggest happens. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you, Minister. And uh, look, I, I just and I, I know that this review, I will definitely welcome this review and I will definitely talk to you about this. And um, I think it is important that the Act also broadens the coroner's powers. And I think that is so important. And I would have called for that at our committee, but I think it's a vital role. I think, as you said, that there is then a deputy coroner in Carlo. Um, and I think that's also important, but I do think coroner, uh, Carlo needs his own coroner. I think that is something that um, I'm very passionate about, and I know I've spoken to a lot of people about this. And again, as you said, um, we had the unexpected death of uh, the, our Carlo coroner, Dr. Brendan Dial, in April 2019. And you know, I, I know then, as you said, uh, Eugene O'Connor has, has been in SIP2 since, but I just think overall we need to make sure that this review, I think, does give coroners extra power. I think it would be important it would be done as soon as possible because I do believe we need our own coroner in Carlo. And I would just say I will happily work with you on this and thank you very much for coming back to me, Minister. Thank you. Um, thank you, Deputy. And, and once again, I will engage with you. And obviously, once we have the report and the review uh, and have a, a greater idea in where we're going in terms of what, what changes need to be made, um, that we can continue to engage on that. Um, Jonathan Jacob is deputy coroner yeah. at the moment, so it might be an idea, yeah. uh, as I said, that that request would come in. It is perhaps the case that changes are not being made on the basis that this review is happening and waiting to yeah. see the outcome of that. So in the interim, uh, as I said, it, it would be an option for me as Minister for Justice to authorise the Deputy Coroner, in this instance, uh, Jonathan Jacob, to act contemporaneously with the Coroner, who is obviously uh, acting uh, for both Leash and Carlo at the moment, which I appreciate yeah. is not um, what people in Carlo might want. So we, uh, yeah. we, we'll engage further on it and, and hopefully we'll be able to have. Thank, Thank you. you.